breaking into data science, machine learning, really any technical role from a non-technical background, you've got a little bit of a stigma attached to you. At least I did. When I was breaking into the field, I actually broke into tech from sales. And having that sales experience on my resume, it was difficult. I understood that people were looking at that and saying, okay, this person isn't technical. How does that have anything to do with the role that I would be applying for? It, it was difficult. It was a hard barrier to overcome because people really labeled me almost immediately as non-technical, not technical enough. And against people who had no experience at all in technology, they would look at my resume and say, because I had sales, I was not as technical as somebody maybe who had no experience at all, who's just graduating from a CS program. And that's kind of crazy. But the reality is you're going to have to redefine yourself and you're going to have to put those skills from your previous career into a technical light. You're going to have to make it line up with the job that you're applying for. The good news is there's ways to do that. There are definitely tips and tricks that will allow you to get into your technical role. And when a hiring manager looks at your resume, they're going to look at a more technical individual. They're going to think about you as more technical. So what did I do? Well, I started out, I had a small business and I was doing things like computer installs. I was doing networking. I was doing some web design, doing some SQL DBA type work. But when I had that sales, when people asked like, what was your job job? Because they looked at the consulting experience that I had and they said, meh, and they really dismissed it. And that was kind of discouraging because that was my technical experience. So they would look primarily at the sales jobs and they would just dismiss my resume and say, meh, sales guy. So I had to do a lot of work to reframe myself and reframe my skills so that I came off as more technical than the salesperson. And that's not fair, trust me. It wasn't fair when I was going through it and it's not fair when you go through it either. People should just look at your resume and say, this is a qualified person, this person's educated. But the reality is they don't do that. They look at it and they see it the way they think. They see it with the narrow lens of their experience and that's not something that you can really fix. You can't make them see you differently. You can't move this industry and make everyone in this industry realize that people with non-technical backgrounds can be very qualified from a technical standpoint. You're not going to push past that perception. So you have to sort of play to it. You have to pander to this mindset that doesn't make any sense to you. The way you do that is to begin to minimize the roles that you've had that were outside of technology. That doesn't mean that you minimize your capabilities. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But I had to make the sales roles sort of drop down in my resume. So everything that the hiring manager would see to very begin with, that very first part of the resume was all technical, all about my technical capabilities, whether that was education, my consulting work. I talked about it in a project by project basis. And I found out that's something that hiring managers like seeing instead of I was a consultant and here's all my duties. I just talked project by project, talked about my three most recent projects or in for some resumes, I put my two most impressive projects, both seemed to work. They got a whole lot of response from hiring managers and got me interviews. So that's something you can do is reframe your experience by putting the technology first, whether that's education, maybe you have some independent projects that you've done, maybe you've been part of technology projects, but you've been in maybe a non-technical or semi-technical role, highlight that. Talk about all of your technical experience first, up front, and that really reframes you as a person. You're less of whatever that last role you were in and you're more, you've basically kind of shifted the perception of the hiring manager who's reading your profile or resume, and you've gotten them ready to think about you as a technical person. And then further on down, you say, I'm making the transition from. And now we can talk about reframing a little bit. Now that their perception is really skewed towards you're a technical person, now you can highlight all your other skills and capabilities. This is something that worked out really well for me. At the very beginning of my job search, as I was transitioning into the technical field, I was trying to get software developer jobs. I was trying to get, you know, really that hardcore technology, the image that I had in my head of what I wanted to do as 
a software developer or as, you know, this, this hardcore coding role, hardcore technical role, that was my focus because I couldn't see anything else. I thought that was the only way for me to get into technology and it turned out it wasn't. What worked out better for me was pursuing a sort of tangential role that was number one, still technical, still doing technology work, but it leveraged a whole lot of my past skills working and interacting with customers. I learned I got a whole lot more callbacks for customer facing technology roles. Things like sales engineer were right up my alley. Also, the role that I ended up being in was an installer. So I was installing software and systems at a customer site and then configuring it, getting it set up to be what they could use and making that installation process and adoption process easier and smoother. Obviously, I had an advantage over most people who were in software development or QA or IT or any of those domains because customer service skills are often not taught and not highlighted as well as they really should be. And if you're from outside of technology, especially if you're in any sort of customer facing role, you understand how to deal with customers so much better than the majority of people in technology do. They don't get the customer because they don't live with the customer day to day. In most roles, software developers, IT, any of them really don't get to sit down and spend the time understanding their customer, talking to their customer, learning the nuances of communicating and being great at customer service. And those are some of the skills that you bring if you're from outside of technology that are hugely valuable. They may not be the top of the job requirement, and you may have to do some work convincing people that you are technical enough to be considered. But as soon as you get through that first piece of their perception, when you target roles that are sort of straddling the fence, both technical and non-technical, you're going to have a more successful time because those hiring managers understand that it's not just the technical capabilities, but it's also the ability to, in my case, service the customer. I worked in really high stress situations because the software I was installing, I hate to say it, it was garbage and customers knew it. So I had to do a whole bunch of workarounds. I had to get really creative to solve problems. I had to install software in systems and configurations it was never meant to. I had to bend over backwards to make customers happy and make the software do stuff it just really wasn't meant to do or wasn't built well enough to do. That requires a lot of customer service. It requires a lot of time working with people, the people that are using the software, the people that are depending upon this software to drive results for their business. That's a lot of communication, that's sales, that's customer, customer service. That's all this is. And so I want you to think about what skills, what capabilities do you bring to the job? What did you do in your previous job that could relate to potentially a technical role? Are there hybrid roles that you could use as a launching pad? Because a year after I landed that first IT role, I was in quality assurance. I was doing quality assurance, hardcore, like software development life cycle work. It only took me a year to transition in. A lot of the work that I did in that customer facing role helped me understand the software better than anyone else that was in that hardcore development organization. I knew the customers, I knew how they used the software. And so the testing that I was able to do, the test cases I was able to write up, the test plans that I built, those were all customer centric. They were all far more realistic, far more real world than anything else that had been done before. And so I found bugs nobody else could. I excelled at that quality assurance role because of that role that I had before. And it set me up to have an immense, immense advantage over most people in my career because I understood the pain of the customer. I could act as a customer advocate and most of the features and the software that I developed going forward was focused on the customer. I built for them and the features that I deployed and the software products I deployed were more successful because I spent the time talking to customers. And that's something that's huge now is this user experience, customer-centric design and development. All of that's big. 
But I got in early because, well, I was one of the people who began to understand how important it was for the software to work the way people needed it to. And that's something you as a non-technical person can bring to the job. And you can also take these stepping stone roles. You can pick something like sales engineer is a great one. Project manager, not a bad stepping stone into technology. Product manager, again, each one of those has technical roots, but also has non-technical skills that are required and that are highlighted in many cases to make you successful in that role. So your hiring managers are looking for not only the technical skills, but they're also going to be able to consider all of those other skills that you're transferring into the role. They're going to see the value that you bring as an individual contributor because you have skills that most people in the team don't. And that's worth highlighting on your resume. Talk about how you see those skills making you a better technical contributor. If you're talking about breaking into IT, where you're going to do maybe server or environmental administration, whether you're going to be managing multiple environments across multiple teams. If you come from a background where you had to do a lot of communications, where you had to be customer facing, understand that in IT, you have internal customers and they're going to be a whole lot happier with you if you can take the time, if you can speak to them in their terms talking to their needs, not always talking about your needs and what has to happen and doing this and doing that. A lot of people in IT come off as rude or at least rigid because they don't have that focus on people, on talking to people, on empathizing, on understanding their needs, and then on incorporating solutions that take all of those needs into account. And if you come from another group, say you come from accounting, you've had to deal with software. You've had to work with stuff that probably doesn't work so hot. You've had to deal with manual processes that are just painful. And then someone bringing you a software solution that they say, yay, this is going to be amazing. And it isn't. It makes your life harder. You understand the customer. You understand that pain point that they have. But you also understand that if the solution doesn't work the way that you needed it to, it made your life worse, not better. So those are all customer centric perspectives that you can bring to the job because you weren't always technical. So talk about those. Look at yourself as a user, as a communicator. Were you a leader? That's another piece that's huge as well. Not a lot of people in technology have leadership skills. So you may not be the most valuable technical contributor to begin with, but somebody else who's led a team is going to look at you as a hiring manager. I'm going to look at you and say, okay, this is someone who will eventually be able to lead a team. They definitely need some work on the technical side, but you've got leadership experience. You're going to be someone who can mentor. You're going to be somebody that I can rely on to help me lead the team, to help me manage the team. I can give you more complex projects because you're a leader. You can bring a team together and get them all on the same page to get work products out the door. All of that's huge. And there's not a whole lot of that in technology. There's a whole lot of technical people. There's not a whole lot of leaders. Same thing with communications, like we've been talking about for quite some time. Just not a lot of communicators. What else is missing? Again, customer centricity. Being someone who was a customer. We don't have a lot of that. So I want you to go through and find those pieces that are rare in the technical field. It may be domain expertise. Did you work in healthcare? Did you work in finance? You have an understanding of that domain. Most software developers don't bring to the job. So again, you're technical, but you want to point back at those skills that you bring in from whatever domain it is and highlight them and say how much of a benefit domain knowledge that you bring to this particular role is going to be. I worked in retail, so I didn't end up doing any sort of retail software until after I left my last corporate gig. It was almost 20 years after I'd left my retail job. I was brought in to do pricing strategy and you'd never guess all of that retail experience came back to me. And I understood their brick and mortar stores. I understood their salespeople. I understood their supply chain. I, 
I'd lived that for years as a salesperson. I understood from the front end all of the different domain specific and market specifics. That domain knowledge was invaluable because I spoke the language that all of these other groups did. I spoke to the particular industry that they worked in. I spoke about retail very specifically, very knowledgeably. And when I was in meetings with people at other parts of the business, I understood exactly what they were talking about. That's another thing that you can talk up. It's another thing that you can spend some time discussing in your resume and target those types of roles. If you've worked in retail, target retail. If you've worked in maybe healthcare or pharmaceuticals, target a role in healthcare or pharmaceuticals because that domain knowledge that you bring is critical. Even if you worked at say UPS or FedEx, You've worked in supply chain and logistics. You've seen it from the front end. You have a better grip on the industry than many other people do. So if you bring that into a technical role, working with a supply chain or logistics problem space, or maybe even going back and working for UPS or, or FedEx as an IT person or as a software developer, a data scientist, you have domain expertise. You have some credibility with users because you can always bring that out of your back pocket. Well, how do you know? Because I was on the front line for X number of years. That gives you tremendous credibility with people outside of the technical organization that you can leverage to partner up with them, to create great solutions to some of their more complex business challenges because you understand it better than anyone else does. Those are all really important things for you to highlight because they make you stand out. And even though you don't have the strongest technical background, now that non-technical background has gone from being something that was an impediment, being something that made you look less valuable, to now making you make way more sense as a new hire. And so those are some of the things you can do to reframe and, I don't know, redefine yourself almost as someone who is not only technical, but also has value above and beyond just those technical skills that you've gathered. Don't lose your career. Don't lose all of those years thinking, well, that didn't get me anywhere. It really did. Because think about it. All of those capabilities that you've built up over the years, they don't go away. They don't disappear. They're still part of you. They're still going to be part of your career. And they are long-term. What's going to differentiate you and help you advance faster because you have things no one else has. So don't lose them, but think about how to reframe them so that you are technical first now and all of these other supporting skills second. Then look at the jobs you're applying at. Make sure that they line up with some of these secondary, maybe even tertiary capabilities. Bring some of your old life into your new career and don't be afraid to not completely break the ties. Do semi-technical roles. A lot of times that's a great bridge like mine. It was a great bridge from where I was before to where I wanted to be. And it didn't take as long as you would expect. You don't have to do, you know, a lengthy career stay in a stepping stone role. Sometimes all it takes is a year. And all of a sudden you're in that role that you were really targeting to begin with. You're a better fit, you have a better value proposition, lower learning curve, a whole lot less intimidating. You know the company better. There are so many benefits to taking one of those stepping stone roles that helps you go from outsider to insider, someone who's seen as non-technical to somebody who obviously now has proven their technical chops. So those are some tips for how to redefine yourself and how to break into technology from a non-technical role.